The Fieldhouse, a production of Pikewood Creative, is presented by Greer Industries. On the campus of West Virginia University stood the Fieldhouse, a place many considered not just a building, but a home. It was a place where people gathered to celebrate, to learn, to play, and to cheer on some of the greatest teams WVU has ever known. For nearly 90 years, thousands of students, athletes, professors, and fans walked through the doors of the Fieldhouse. It was a hub of activity, from historic basketball games, where names like Hunley, West, Thorne, and Williams became nationally known, to graduations, concerts, and class registration. It was the place to be on campus. With the rise of competitive collegiate sports at WVU, 24-year-old Harry Stansberry was hired in 1916 as athletic director, just two years after he graduated from West Virginia Wesleyan. He was known for being a bold decision maker and had his share of enemies through the years. Stansberry spearheaded a movement to get Old Mountaineer Field built in 1924. It took just six months to complete major construction on the field. As WV basketball started to grow, the team was running out of places to practice and play. Eventually, a building called the Ark became the team's home. It gave the basketball and wrestling teams a place to practice, but it had little space to host games of any significance. Stansbury lobbied for a new facility and won enough support to move the project forward. Plans were born to build a new field house. Construction on the $315,000 facility was finishing right at the time when the Great Depression hit. West Virginia and Stansbury would face very hard times during the coming years. The athletic department built a debt of $135,000. Fortunately for the university, the West Virginia State Legislature appropriated funds to wipe out that debt and allowed the department to regain its financial footing. The Fieldhouse held its first official basketball game on January 3, 1929 against Salem. Mountaineers won 26-23, and the victory was an indication of things to come. WVU would win 80% of its games held in the facility over the next 41 years. The first official event at the Fieldhouse was actually held in December of 1928, the inauguration of Dr. John Roscoe Turner, WVU's 10th president. From its opening, the WVU Fieldhouse was known as a very modern facility. One reason was the indoor cinder track that ringed the building, leading to the creation of the WVU indoor track games, which drew some of the biggest names in the sport. Eddie Tolan, an Olympic champion in the 800 meters, ran at the Fieldhouse, as well as Ralph Metcalf, who tied the world record in the 70-yard dash. But the biggest name to ever run at the storied hall was Jesse Owens. Owens ran as a freshman for Ohio State at the Fieldhouse in 1934, winning the 60-yard dash and came within a tenth of a second of setting the world record. Along with the school's physical education department, two other sports called the Fieldhouse home, wrestling and boxing. The wrestling team included Whitey Gwynn, who would later coach the team and become a longtime athletic trainer for the department. Another member of the wrestling team was two-sport star athlete Ben Schwartzwalder of Parkersburg, who would go on to win a national championship as the head football coach at Syracuse. Boxing matches were a major draw, and West Virginia won three individual NCAA national championships with Sam Littlepage, Ashby Dickerson, and Mickey Bruto. One newspaper article during that time succinctly summarized the boxing team, writing, the Beak Busters earn a pretty penny for the university. WVU won an unofficial team boxing championship in 1938, 10 years before the NCAA started awarding team points. 
The sport was curtailed in 1943 due to World War II and removed as an NCAA sport in 1960. Some of the biggest box office successes were triple headers against Pitt. A JV basketball game was played first, followed by a varsity basketball game, and then the finale, a boxing match, which was the top draw. In the late 1930s, another event was added to the bill as Harry Stansberry attracted the West Virginia State High School basketball tournament to the Fieldhouse. It would be played there for the next 20 years, giving the Mountaineers an opportunity to show off their facilities to the likes of Charleston High's Hot Rod Hundley and East Bank's Jerry West. The state wrestling tournament was also held at the Fieldhouse for a number of years. Stansbury was also responsible for the creation of the state track and field championships and oversaw the selection of all state football teams during his years at West Virginia. One night in the winter of 1947, the Fieldhouse nearly went up in smoke. Newspaper reports suggest that a cigarette butt was tossed into a sawdust pile at the end of the pole vault, which eventually turned into a fire. Across the river in Westover, Mrs. George Hardwick was up at 4 a.m. with her daughter who was studying for a chemistry test at WVU. Mrs. Hardwick spotted the fire and called the fire department who rushed to the scene to put it out. About 120 seats were damaged in the blaze, but the building was saved. Mrs. Hardwick was hailed as a hero and was given a lifetime pass to watch any sporting event at the building. The 1942 NIT Championship basketball team went a long way in putting West Virginia on the national map. Coach Dyke Racy's team shocked the field, winning the NIT Championship at Madison Square Garden after being the last team added to the field. The Mountaineers were viewed as a significant underdog and seated last in the eight-team field. At that time, the NIT was considered the major title in college basketball, not the NCAA Championship. WVU knocked off top seed and reigning champion Long Island, who was coached by Grafton native Claire B, then won its next two games to claim the championship. I think that was uh, the start of people really recognizing basketball as a major sport. I think before that, uh, football had been considered number one. Basketball buffs still remember the name of Scotty Hamilton and Coach Racy. The 1942 team went 19-4 and, and did not lose a game at home. West Virginia would go on to win 57 straight home games from 1944 through 1949. As the popularity of the building grew, so did its seating capacity. In 1948, the number of seats rose by 2,400 making for a capacity of 6,500. What did not change was the proximity of fans to the court. It was very unique in that the verticality of how the seats went up. The benches were at the end and it was so small and the people were right on top of you that I think for a visiting player it was really, really tough to play there. On the sidelines, if you went two steps out of bounds, you were in a crowd. It was a tremendous home court advantage. Fans were loud. You just had a feeling when you played there that we can't lose here. During one basketball game against Pitt in 1948, eccentric Panther coach Dr. Red Carlson was complaining to the officials about what he perceived to be bad calls. Among other things, he yelled to the refs, you burn me up. Someone in the stands dumped a bucket of water on him and said, that should cool you off. The next time Pitt played at the Fieldhouse, Carlson sported an umbrella on the sideline. Basketball took center stage in the building over the next decade as the legendary names of Mark Workman, Hot Rod Hundley, and Jerry West carried on the basketball tradition, making West Virginia one of the elite teams in all of college basketball. The 1958 team finished the season ranked number one, and in 1959, WVU came oh so close, losing in the NCAA National Championship game to California. In the 1960s, Rod Thorne carried on the tradition of nationally known West Virginia-born players as the Mountaineers put together another historic home winning streak spanning 
42 games. The Fieldhouse had become a facility that no visiting team looked forward to playing in. The Mountaineers were so dominant that they won the Southern Conference regular season and tournament championships in six out of nine seasons. A lot of that was due to great talent. Over the course of 12 years, West Virginia had two number one and two number two overall draft selections in the NBA. The large crowds made the Fieldhouse an attractive venue for other basketball games. The 1960 Olympic team played an exhibition game against the Cleveland Pipers of the old National Industrial Basketball Association. That Olympic team included Jerry West. Oscar Robertson led the U.S. team with 26 points that August night, while former Mountaineer Lloyd Scher had 10 points for Cleveland. Scher was actually the number 12 overall pick in the 1958 NBA draft, but instead opted to play in the Industrial Basketball League. The NBA also staged games at the Fieldhouse. The Syracuse Nationals were struggling to draw a crowd, so they scheduled a regular season home game against the Los Angeles Lakers in 1961 in Morgantown. Of course, at that time, the Lakers had Hot Rod Hundley and Jerry West and were coached by Fred Schaus, the former head basketball coach at WVU. The Lakers returned the next season, this time against the Cincinnati Royals. West led all scorers with 46 points in an overtime win. Oscar Robertson had 30 for the Royals. The Fieldhouse was the hub of campus activity. Classes were held daily within its halls. Concerts took place in the historic building, including the Dave Brubeck Quartet and Louis Armstrong. Class registrations were held in the building for decades and commencements were celebrated annually. Most of the student body spent time there, even if they didn't come to the basketball games. I spent more time in the old field house than any other building on campus. I was a PE major. I took half or three-fourths of my classes at the old field house. We were there from September to May. As time marched on, there was a growing sentiment that the Fieldhouse was outdated and needed to be replaced by a new, modern structure to help with recruiting. Talk began as early as 1959 to build a new Fieldhouse. Funding wasn't secured until 1967 for the new WVU Coliseum, and completion on the 15,000-seat facility happened in time for the season opener in 1970 against Colgate. The Mountaineers played their final game inside the Fieldhouse against Pitt on March the 3rd, 1970. West Virginia let a 19-point lead slip away as the Panthers won 92-87. It was a fitting end to the Mountaineers' 11-15 season. The final official event at the Fieldhouse was a Dion Warwick concert in April of 1970. Tickets went for $2.50. The building underwent renovations and was reopened in 1973 as Stansbury Hall to honor the longtime athletic director who passed away in 1966. Academic departments, along with Army and Air Force ROTC headquarters, were among those who called Stansbury Hall home for the next 45 years. One thing that remained in the building was the playing floor. The field house became the location for pickup basketball in Morgantown. Kids young and old flocked to the storied playing surface to hone their skills. The doors were always open. That's, that's what you did. And I used to go from Central Elementary down to Baker, Baker's Hardware over to Moore and Perriott, take my basketball and walk down the field house at like seven or eight years old. You would leave the field house more confident and you would leave the summer more confident. You picked up some bad habits, but you left with confidence and swagger. When you grow up here, everything's about WVU. And you had a little bit of everything there. There was wrestling on the far end, and then you had the gymnastics team above you. And then you had, you know, all the college kids trying to play in the middle, but it, it just worked. To me, like that was our wonder years. 
I mean, that was like the innocence. You went in that place, that was your escape. You know, it's, it's like a little slice of your life, a little slice of your heart being taken out. Because you spent so much time there, had so many good memories. Yeah, it's emotional. I would say it's almost like a parent to me. It forms your life, Stansbury Hall. Because I practiced every day in there. I went to class all the time in there. I met my, and had class with my wife in there, and I became a coach. This brings back a lot of very pleasant memories, and uh, you know, you hate to see something like that go. You know, they have a much nicer arena now, but that place was special. You know, I was hoping that maybe they would declare it something that, that they could keep, but you know, progress is progress. It's heart-wrenching. We've got so many great memories. I understand what they're doing. I know they have to do it, but I don't like it because most of my life was in that building down there.